Hello guys, in this video I'd like to explain and show you how to configure persistent assay keys for Spring authorization and resource servers. I am Nam Haming at code Java.net. You know, Spring authorization server uses a JRT encoder to sign access tokens issued to the clients, and the encoder uses the private key in an assay key pair. And Sovereign Resource Server uses a JRT decoder to verify access tokens sent from the clients. And the decoder uses the public key in the ISA key pair. And by default, Sovereign Security generates an in memory ISA key pair on each server restart. That means the clients won't be able to use the issued access tokens if the server restarted, even the tokens have not expired. So it's recommended to use persistent RSA keys instead of in-memory ones in Sabring authorization and resource servers. Let me demo a Sabring authorization and resource server application to help you understand the default behavior, the limitation of the generated in-memory RSA key pair. Okay, so you see here I have a Java Sabring good application that enables uh, an authorization and resource server in one application. Now let me start this uh, Spring Boot application. And you see in this uh, application I have a REST controller for a protected resource here with the endpoint is slash resource and it is protected uh, in this configuration class okay it requires the client must have the scope read or write okay now let me test this endpoint using postman test get a protected resource here you see I specify the URL is like this okay and uh, in uh, authorization here I uh, don't specify any uh, authorization. If I click send, I got the status for one unauthorized. Now let me test the get access token API provided by the uh, authorization server. I need to specify the HTTP method is post and the URL is like this. And in the request body, specify three parameters. Clan credentials is for one type clan ID and clan secret, I specify valid, correct values of clan ID and clan secret and click send button here to submit the request and you see I got the status to our OK successful from the, from the server and the response body is a JSON document with the issued access token is included in the field access underscore token here and the token type is bearer. The token expiration time is indicated in the field expired in. It is around 300 seconds or 5 minutes. Now let me use this issued access token to access the protected resource copy. And I specify uh, authorization is bearer token here. And I paste the newly issued access token here click send and i got the successful status to our ok and the response body here this is a protected resource that means the issue access token is working now what if i restart the server so that the issue access token this one has expiration time of five minutes so of course it has not expired now let me uh, stop or uh, restart the server restart and uh, as I said before each time the application restarted Spring security will generate an in-memory ISD key pair if no key configuration is found so the server has restarted now if I click the send button here again I got the status for one unauthorized even if the access token this one has not expired so uh, that means uh, we need to configure persistent ISD key 
yeah, in order to uh, enable REST clients to use issue access tokens in case uh, server restart. Makes sense. And here are the steps to configure persistent OSS keys for Spring authorization and resource servers. Firstly, we use the open SS shell tool to generate an OSS key pair which is stored under OSC slash resource C directory in the project and then configure path to the generated key files in the application properties file and next create a java record class that represents the GISA keys and use the bring configuration properties annotation to load content of the private and public key files to java objects of type ISA private key and ISA public key and declare two bins of type JWT encoder and JWT decoder that use the configure public and private keys in the security configuration class and you know the open SSL library is installed on macOS by default with libre SSL distribution so if you are using macOS you don't have to do anything to use open SSL but if you are using Windows you need to manually install open SSL uh, follow this video also on this channel guide right to install open SSL library on Windows Now let me show you how to use the open SSL library to generate an SSA key pair right inside the IDE so under the SRC slash main slash resource C directory here right click to create a new folder where we will store the generated key files and name it as search, search for certificates okay and right click on the newly created folder and show it terminal and we have the terminal right inside the IDE here so we can use the open SSL command in order to generate an SSA key pair type open SSL hit enter and you can see this is a open SSL prompt type version okay you can see that means open SSL is available in the operating system let me quit the open SSL okay now the first command is to generate a key pair open SSL gen rsc dash out and the file name is key pair dot pair okay you see it has generated um, a nice bit key with the key length is 2048 bit okay and the second step is extract the public key from the private key using this command open ssl and say dash in and specify the input file is key pair dot pair and specify the option dash pop out to extract the public key and specify the output file with the flag dash out and the file name is public dot pair okay if you refresh the search directory here you see the key pair dot pair and public dot pair files appear here okay and the third command is to uh, convert the private key to pkcs8 format which is required by uh, various security tools so type the following command open ssl pkcs8 dash top k8 dash in form is bam and dash out form is bam and specify the flag no crypt and dash in input is key pair dot pair and our profile is private dot pair to extract and convert the private key to bkcs format okay done then refresh the search directory here and you can see the private dot pair file uh, appear here you can so you can view the content of the key files using a text editor because it is a similar text file with encoded 
uh, private key, public key as you can see here. And the public.pam file is also a text file. If you open it using a text editor, it is a text file as you can see here. Okay, so then we can delete the keypad.pam file. We just uh, need only the two files private.pam and public.pam. So delete the keypad.pam file. And the next step is to update the application configuration file, the application properties file, specify two new properties that point to the path of the private .pam and public .pam files in the third directory here. So I named the property as say public dash key equal class class path indicates the file will be in the class path and it is under search public dot pam and the second new property is for the private key it is similar I say dot private dash key private dash key and the path here private dot pam okay And the next step is create a Java record type that represents public and private key. So right click here and choose record. The name of the record is as a key properties. Okay, and in this record has two fields. The first one is as a public key. Public key. And the second one is as a private key private key private key if you can't import the ISA public key you can import ISA private key from the package java.security.interfaces here and public key from the same package okay so this is a record type and then we need to use the configuration properties here configuration properties provided by Subring Framework so uh, when the application starts Subring we check uh, the application configuration file here and load the corresponding corresponding uh, properties here with the matching name public key and private key so here we need to uh, specify the prefix is as prefix is as as specified in the application properties file here as a public key, as a private key. Okay. And you can see a warning here. When using configuration properties, it is recommended to add the Spring Boot configuration processor to the class path. So click here to add the Spring Boot configuration processor to the pom.xml file. And you see the pom.xml file has been updated with the Spring Boot configuration processor. Okay. And in the main class, uh, we need to enable configure configuration property using the enable configuration properties annotation. And for the class is as a key properties as a key properties dot class. And finally, let's update the security configuration class like this. Declare a new field of type as a key properties and have Subring auto white via constructor like this and declare bin of type a ZWT encoder like this, return a new Nimbus ZWT encoder and also declare another bin of type ZWT decoder, return a new Nimbus ZWT decoder. So far, we have updated the code to configure persistent ISA keys, and now it's time to test uh, the test guest access token API and get a protected resource. So start the application. Okay, it has started, and let me uh, test the uh, get uh, protected resource. Click send, and I got the status for one unauthorized here. Now I get a new access token.
by submit this request. Okay, I got a new ECU access token here. So I copy and use the newly ECU access token in the test get a protected resource here. Okay, I paste the new ECU access token here and click send. Now I got the status to our OK and the response body here. This year protected resource. Okay, it works. Now let me stop and start the server again to make sure that it is actually using the configure persistent ISA keys private.pem and public.pem files here. Okay, now I start again. Okay, started and now if I uh, click the send button here, it should work because uh, the server has uh, restarted but we use persistent ISA keys so we can uh, still use the ECU access token that has not expired so I click send and you see I got status to our oh, okay successful and the response body here that means the persistent ISA keys uh, are now working properly in this project okay let me stop the application Okay, so far you have seen how to configure persistent ISA keys for Spring Authorization and Resource Servers, which is a best practice in a production. I hope you found this video helpful. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. Thanks for watching.